Hello, I'm John Pacific, a cryptographic engineer at NewCypher. Today I'm going to be showing PyUmbral, which is our split key proxy, our split key threshold proxy re-encryption library for Python. Uh, so let's just jump right into it. Here's how you import Umbral. Uh, so we're impo importing several things. PRE, which is Umbral itself. Keys, which are for Umbral private Umbral keys, such as a public key and a private key, and a configuration uh, setting uh, system. We use a default curve, uh, sec p256 k1, which is the same curve known as, known that Bitcoin uses, and we like this because the entire ecosystem uses it. So you can set this default curve by just calling config.set default curve. If you don't set this, a warning will come up saying that it that it's using it by default. This is actually going to error because I've already set it and uh, because I'm running it in IPython. So we're going to be generating keys for Alice and Bob next. This is just two key, two key pairs, a private key and a public key for both Alice and Bob. Uh, we can do this by calling the umbral private key uh, class here and calling gen key. We can get a public key by deriving it from the private key by calling git pub key. We do this for both Alice and Bob. So let's just demonstrate some standard uh, PKE, which is public key encryption. We'll have a plain text which says proxy re-encryption is cool. And we can call this by simply doing pre.encrypt. We use Alice's public key and her plain text. And the output of this is, umbral, is an umbral capsule and a ciphertext. The umbral capsule is the output of umbral itself. So this is what will get re-encrypted. This is using a key encapsulation mechanism, which is typically asymmetric cryptography. The ciphertext here is the output of a data encapsulation mechanism, that which is typically a symmetric algorithm, such as AES-256 or ChaCha20 Poly1305, which is what PyUmbral uses. So I can print out this ciphertext here. We get it, such as this, and it is encrypted. So next we're going to decrypt it. This is done very simply by passing in umbral capsule, which you can think of as essentially a, an encrypted key through umbral. And we pass in Alice's private key, the ciphertext, and a pub key that Alice uses essentially to sort of verify a signature. And you can see it is decrypted. So next we're going to demonstrate how new cipher KMS uses this. Bob, when he wants access to some data, he will grab the ciphertext and the capsule that Alice had created for herself. And we're just dem I'm demonstrating that he receives this through a side channel such as IPFS, S3, Google Cloud, etc. And by simply just renaming the variable here. And in this case, I'm showing that Bob does not have access to this data yet because it has not gone through proxy re-encryption, otherwise suggesting that Alice has not granted him access yet. So he passes in his capsule and his private key, along with the original ciphertext, and Alice's public key to verify that signature. The decryption has failed because, again, he doesn't have access to it and Alice has not granted it to him. So next, I'm going to show you what Alice has to do to grant access to it. She needs to generate a, re a split re-encryption key. This is done very similar to Shamir's secret sharing. Uh, so she uses this, she uses her private key and Bob's public key to do this. What she's doing here is generating 20 shares where 10 are needed to reconstruct the original key. And what's gonna happen is she's gonna take these 20 different shares and distribute them to 20 different nodes. So Bob only has to contact 10 nodes for re-encryption so that he can actually have access to the data. So kfrags here is a list of 20 different keys. Show this by doing line kfrags. So in the next component, I'm simulating Bob going to each uh, node and getting it, re getting his capsule re-encrypted. So to show this, I'm picking 10 random shares outside of this list of K frags. Just to show you that it doesn't matter which 10 frags you pick, you only need 10 unique frags to re-encrypt this data. And so now what Ursula is going to do on her own node on, on the new Cypher network is call pre.reencrypt using her K frag and Bob's capsule that he passes to her. This gives an output of a C frag, which is essentially a ciphertext fragment, and she gives that back to Bob. Bob attaches this to his capsule, 
which essentially when he re receives, when he re-encrypts the minimum number, which is 10, he'll attach all 10, which grants him access to this data. A little bit more information on these K frags is that each K frag is what we consider perfectly secret and has no information by itself at all, unless that minimum is reached. So even if, node, if nodes try to collude, they have to collude with a minimum number to do this. This is actually really hard. So it distributes trust on the network and makes it very hard for these nodes to collude. And even if they did successfully collude, the only thing you can really do with a re-encryption key is re-encrypt data from Alice to Bob. So it's a, it requires a very nuanced attack, but it's not really able, it's not easy to perform. So now Bob has been granted access, which we can now demonstrate decryption by simply decrypting it like he did before. So now that the fragments, the ciphertext fragments have been attached to his capsule here, he passes in the capsule, his private key, the ciphertext, and Alice's public key, and now it's decrypted. So in this case, Bob has been granted access by Alice, which allows him to decrypt this data. Alice can simply, can also revoke uh, this ability, ability to decrypt by having the Ursula nodes, the proxy nodes in our network, just delete the fragment that they received. So this is the PyUmbral proxy re-encryption library. Uh, thank you for watching. The links to GitHub and others will be in, below in the description. Thanks.